नहीं है हिचके जाना मन के स्वास्थ्य पर है ध्यान लगाना अब नहीं है हिचके जाना मन के स्वास्थ्य पर है ध्यान लगाना मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ मनोदर्पण के काउंसलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर आठ चार चार आठ चार चार शून्य छ तीन दो नंबर एक बार फिर सुने एट फोर फोर एट फोर फोर जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू नमस्कार आई एम हरप्रीत कौर एंड आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू आर लाइव एंड इंटरक्टिव सेशन मनोदर्पण परिचर्चा We would like to inform you that Paricharcha sessions are held under the beautiful initiative of Ministry of Education as a part of Atmanirbhar Bharat Abhiyan for providing psychosocial support to our parents, teachers and of course the students of the country. And today the topic that we have taken up is extremely relevant as always and very different. Today we are going to talk about developing socio-emotional learning skills for promoting mental health of adolescents well you are watching us right now on our e vidya channels 6 and 11 and also on our youtube channel ncert official also you are watching us currently on our facebook page at ncert official you know the topic now i'm sure you must be wondering about what all we are going to discuss in this session you must be having a lot of questions in your mind that you would want to ask to our experts so you can definitely get in touch with us and how you can do that you can contact us we have our phone numbers for you we have a dedicated website for you so we have two phone numbers for you the first one is our pme vidya number which is 8800440590 You can also contact us on Manodarpan National Telehealth Line number, which is eight double four eight double four zero six three two. We also have a dedicated website, which is www. Manodarpan. Education. Gov. In. You can browse this website and you can find the answers to lots of your questions, and of course, you can get some relevant content there. which will definitely help you in your journey and now let me tell you the topic once again today we are going to talk about developing socio emotional learning skills for promoting mental health of adolescents and to have a discussion on the same we have four panelists with us today we are joined by professor anil kumar k he is professor of education from rie ncert mysuru welcome to the session sir yeah good afternoon everyone good afternoon we are also joined by dr vasanti tyagarajan she is senior principal and correspondent from shishya school hosur tamil nadu welcome to the session ma'am welcome all the participants and members here thank you so much sure we are also joined by ms kripa prakriti she is founder and chief psychologist from arista mind care hosur tamil nadu welcome to the session ma'am Welcome everyone. Thank you. Thank you for having me here. And last but not the least, Miss Nandana Verma. She is a research scholar from R I E N C E R T Mysuru. Welcome to the session, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm looking forward for the session. Yes, indeed, we are looking forward to what all we're going to, you know, gain from this session. Yes, something very relevant and beautiful is going to come our way. That is for sure. So let me start this beautiful, uh, you know, session through a question and answer round. My first question is to uh, Professor Anil Kumar K. Sir, I have this very basic question. I request you to kindly highlight the importance of today's topic and what all we're going to discuss in this session. Yeah. Thank you, Harpreet ji. Yes, sir. 
students and us. Today we are going to discuss an important topic, namely developing socio-emotional learning skills for promoting mental health and well-being of adolescents. Mm -hmm. Dear students, during the, we are going to discuss about what is meant by mental well-being, why it is important for all of us, what is the role of socio-emotional learning in developing mental well-being and mental well-being. Students, do you know that one-fifth of the children and adolescents in the school experiences various mental health concerns like stress, anxiety, bullying, learning disability to alcohol or any other substances? The report shows that half of the mental health problems have been established at the age of 12 to 14 and it will be increasing by 75 percentage when the, our students attain the age of 24. I decided to take up this particular topic. If on adolescents like you because you are able to follow our discussion and also you may be able to use the information what we are providing in this webinar. Individuals with a good mental well-being have good productivity. They can also physically active. You will find that they can initiate, develop and maintain good relationships and others. They can even respect others' feelings, empathize with others, able to manage their emotions and in certain times whenever you know various set happens in their life they can bounce back quickly it is also noticed that for good mental well-being have a good uh, relationship with their academic performance so that's why we call it as mental health has got a positive correlation with the academic performance of the students students with mental uh, well-being have also shown better co-curricular activities also. So it is important that it's like you should not only have a good physical health but also mental health. Students, mental health and psychological well-being is a significant concern for all of us. The mental health issues begin by the age of 12 to 14. So essential that we identify it as at an early stage and provide interventions so that we can you know, resolve such problems. If we are not resolving that, then you will find that it will affect their life, basically their you know, proper development. They also lead to poor academic outcomes, right. even leads to unemployment and bad physical health. Hmm. Now a question comes that, how do you know that you have some mental health issues? Mm -hmm. If it is the physical health, it is very easy to answer. You can notice it immediately. But it is very difficult for you at the age to know whether you have any mental health issues or not. Unless you know some of the symptoms of these mental health issues. Yes. Usually, kids are very active in the school. We, as teachers, we find that though children are active, all children are not active the same way. Sometimes we found certain behavioral changes hmm. or in the, uh, changes in their actions. This is a major concern for all of us. Like for an example, you are very active in your studies. But after some times, you know, you are going to dislike the studies or you are telling you are not able to concentrate on your studies. Similarly, good in sports and athletics, but now you hate that field. And to us anymore with that particular field. So again, you want every time you are friends with you, but now you, you know, think that, no, I want to be alone. And so similar, uh, similar cases are there. Earlier, you used to take 
decision for yourself but now you are not able to make various decisions so like this changes we notice sometimes you know some of the students in the, our classrooms so let me ask you whether you know you have certain mental health issues or not in some of the questions like the following but you need not ask you know answer to me but you ask to yourself mm -hmm. you know answer to you, yourself do you feel very anxious about anything very frequently are you really worried about something very often are you stressed frequently whether it is at your studies or any other aspects have you ha ever had a feeling of or unhappiness for a longer time do you exhibit emotional outburst sudden mood changes do you face sleeping problem not getting continuous sleeps throughout the night do you feel alone and withdrawn from other are you addicted to some thing like drugs or alcohol or smoking answer to any one of questions is yes or even you know more than one also then we have to get help from someone if at all you are not able to manage yourself so for helping you can approach your teachers counselors or any mental health professionals available at in your place right early identification of such issues we can able to manage such problems very schools do have a major responsibility to promote you your mental health and well being the school based mental health program mental health programs are more effective ways of promoting your mental health and be it is all about creating environment that promote and sustain positive mental health and well being for everyone among di different strategies for promoting mental health and sorry mental health and well being today's yes. discussion we focus on how socio emotional learning can play a major role in promoting your mental well being and how we can develop this socio emotional learning skills among you all students in order to discuss all these aspects in detail we are fortunate to have three more eminent experts in this webinar Each one of them has a lot of practical experience in this field i am sure that you will enjoy the session and also make use the information for developing a sound mental health and well-being in you right sir wishing you all to have a sound mental health yes thank you arpit ji thank you so much sir thank you for uh, you know raising certain questions which are very serious in manner and that needs to be addressed because we need to introspect we need to analyze whether we are having some kind of issue and do we need to go and consult some psychologist absolutely you have you know made us to question ourselves thank you so much for the same dr vasanti i have a question for you now since uh, you know we now know what exactly we are going to discuss in this session and we have some questions in front of us also could you please explain in detail what is socio emotional learning and uh, how do you think it is important for uh, for us and how it plays an important role when it comes to promoting mental well being of students dr vasanti thank you so much uh, good afternoon everybody once again yes uh, that's a lovely question and i think uh, we were uh, discussing prior to the start of session mm -hmm. what is the meaning of the social and uh, emotional development yes what does it mean 
actually when we talk about the social development as well as the emotional development and we try to combine these two it actually refers to mm. a child or a person's ability mm-hmm. you know to create and also sustain very meaningful relationships with adults and other children okay. so when we talk about social development now social development is not a stand alone development obviously mm. because there is one thing called physical development which happens consciously all the time so social development is a very structured kind of a uh, skill that ability to create that meaningful relationship hmm. and when we talk about the emotional development which is linked with social then we are looking at a child's ability to actually be able to express when we talk about the strength of emotional uh, development it is can the child or the student or the adult express themselves well can they recognize feelings in self and feelings in others and we are also looking at whether they can manage their emotions as well as do we know how they can support others to manage their own uh, emotions so this is where the social as well as the emotional interact very very intricately with each other and that's why it's called the social emotional well being more than anything else because yes. the ability to handle myself as a social being and then my emotions in place put together mm-hmm. how do i become a contributory mem- a member of this society that would be in a nutshell what we're looking at for grooming in our children when we say we develop social emotional learning skills hmm. in our children and schools have a very major role to play uh, if i am permitted to share my uh, slide show i'd like to explain off my screen also yes, possible yes ma'am please yeah. so can i go to the next slide now yes yeah um, is it appearing on the screen the change of slide yes Okay. Is it the slide uh, that you want, ma'am? Uh no, prior to that there are the objectives of the okay. session. Okay. So slide number 4. Yeah, we need the previous slide please, the objectives yes. of the session. Yeah. Yeah. Two objectives yes. of the session. Yes. Yes. So I am when I prepared this uh, presentation I was focusing on two very important areas because I understand that the majority of uh, our participants today would be coming from the student community which is good and we would have definitely teachers along with them other educators so two things i'm looking at is how do i uh, how do children understand and work on their own feelings that they have that's the emotional aspect because when that is taken care then we know how to interact with others with that and as teachers how do we sustain the well-being in our schools so the next slide please yes and that's why there is this explanation that when there is a very strong attempt at the social and emotional learning that's happening when we say the word learning it means that we enable children to understand their social areas and their their emotional areas and that learning enables the school and the children to have that mental health and wellness across the school so this is called the health wellness the mental health and the mental wellness of an institution we have to work on both together next slide please Yes this slide talks about the role of the NEP which we all know mm. and the NEP uh, national education policy 2020 definitely envisions the aim of education will not only be cognitive that's definitely for sure that though there is going to be a focus on cognitive there is going to be the building of character and creating holistic well rounded individuals and how can that happen through a very strong emotionally strong child and emotionally socially emotionally equipped child so that all the 21st century skills of communication or cooperation or teamwork or resilience all of this is now getting inbuilt through our program that strengthens the social emotional wellness of our students next please yeah so uh, i'm not able to get you know the center screen is not moving at all it's only the side that's moving i'm just wondering why it looks like you had to resume your slide show or something Yeah, isn't uh, this the slide that you want, ma'am? No, in the center, I'm only seeing the first one. In the side above, below my image, I'm seeing small image, so it's difficult to read off. I think you have to resume your slide show on your system. Oh, uh, yeah, but it's completely visible to the viewers, ma'am. Uh, I not the center s- screen, ma'am. This okay, so uh, I yeah, would. It, uh, my screen shows resume slide show, which means I think your people who are operating this should resume it. 
Okay, so I request our uh, the team, you know, to resume the slideshow for ma'am. She is unable to read actually. So, yeah. Yeah. Luckily, I know yeah. some of the slides by heart, so I started speaking on my own. Yes. But some of these yeah. need my very close interaction. So your team will have to resume my slideshow. Yes, ma'am. So team, you will request that please start the slideshow again. Ma'am, there is a little bit of a problem in the reading. Yes, yes. So, yeah. 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 so yeah. can we have the slideshow again? Because the content is not visible to her. Yes, ma'am. So you have raised very, uh, you know, very valid points, and uh, you actually defined the socio-emotional learning in a very beautiful manner. And you're absolutely right that unless and until somebody is socially strong and uh, emotionally strong, that person, you know, actually can't be a successful person because we know today. Every other person is complaining of anxiety, stress, depression, yeah. as if, you know, it is very difficult for them to absorb the things, to be patient. Exactly. And this is not a very good situation because uh, when you're out of the school and you go uh, for higher studies or when you start working in a corporate culture, you face a lot of things. And if sure. you're not socially strong internally, you're not emotionally strong, you can end up making your life mess. So this is a cause of concern, exactly. actually. So you can see my statistical data, which is on the screen now. A survey shows that mm -hmm. why is uh, social emotional learning so important for academic development in schools? Yes. Because we find that uh, surveys have clearly shown there's a marked increase in students' grades and scores mm -hmm. when they are very strong on the social emotional side. Mm -hmm. Because you can't be learning and putting things into an examination when you're not emotionally strong. You're upset. And you don't know how to take the exam, then how do you get your grades? Exactly. So still emotional development definitely brings that. The second aspect is what you mentioned just now also, ma'am, that 80% mm. of employers outside the walls of our institution, the corporate sector, mm. they say that if at all we need success in our employees as well as the company that's going to float the products, mm. social emotional skill, uh, skills are very important. And 75% of the world's students, they say that they feel very negative. That's a very... Uh, important aspect that we all have to look at as um, educators. Why are students feeling this way? How do we integrate social emotional skills into the curriculum? 90% hmm. of educators who were interviewed said social emotional skills definitely can benefit students more importantly than they can be taught because uh, skills are not something that are taught. They are practiced frequently. Yes. Yes. Whether it's bicycle riding or culinary skill or even a social skill, an emotional skill, we have to enable children to work on these skills yes. and uh, strengthen it in them. Yes. Absolutely. Next slide, please. Yes. Yeah. Can so I just brought the slide just to uh, kind of present hmm. an alarming thing that happens across the globe. When you look at children who have suffered violence, there is youth crime happening everywhere. There's a paper that talks about five hurt in a gunfire in a school, hmm. number of incidents where these teenagers are offenders. And the incident by sex, boys, 79%, first-time offenders, repeat offenders. Now, what do all these things show us? That is something wrong with children or is something wrong with our schooling? Mm. That's the big question we have to answer. So somewhere we have to realize that these, uh, these statistics, these headlines are actually indicating to us that something definitely has to be done inside our classrooms, inside our schools, so that when children feel emotionally safe, they do not become aggressive. It's very obvious. Most of the cases, if we go through them, why did the child behave that way? Why was there gunfire violence? We find they've been teased, they've been mocked, they've been put down. And all of this creates a kind of anger, which is an emotion. And this child doesn't know how to manage the anger. They involve in a shootout or violence or injury on others. So children need to know how to manage it. Somebody teases you, somebody puts you down. How do I equip myself with skills of self-care? How do I talk to somebody like a counselor, a teacher, someone who, an adult who can pull me out of my crisis? Why should I be trying on my own as a child? These are some very important skills we have to give our children. Can they have self-awareness to recognize that something is going wrong with them? Mm -hmm. They're getting angry. Can they read their emotions at every point of time? These are the very important skills that we need to give our children. Next slide, please. So we'll take this uh, video later because of the time factor. Hmm. We'll proceed and come back to it later. Okay. Uh, yes. Mm. Can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah. yeah. If you look at this, uh, it's very obvious that it's not just the research, but everywhere around the globe, what is shown is that 
when there are highly emotional uh, uh, intelligence or whatever we are talking about, it is more important than your IQ. So today what is happening, a lot of focus is happening in our schools with the IQ part of it, the, the so-called uh, intelligence, as we call it, the, uh, the competence of your brain to recall, to write, to create. But what is more important is a big iceberg below, mm. that emotional quotient. What are we doing with that? And unless that is handled, the one that you see him above is not really the peak that we are scaling. And that's why I brought in this quotation from Aristotle who says, educating the mind without educating the heart is no education at all. So there could be a school topper, but who has no empathy at all for others, who does not, who puts down other children in the class, looks down upon others. So how does that IQ manage the EQ? So this is where the schools have to defocus, I would say, on the IQ aspect of it. And now focus on what we call the emotional quotient of children or the social emotional skills of our children. That is educating the heart. The next slide, please. So there are many feelings that our adolescents actually undergo. What are they? If you just click, you'll get some things coming up. Could you just uh, click the screen, please? Yeah. Next. Yeah, you'll get a picture coming up. Please. Next, yeah. One day you find your children, they are very cheerful and excited. I'm sure we'll all agree. Yes. The students here. Someday children are on their own. They say, no, don't talk to me now. I need my own privacy. Mm. Next, what they say? Just low and flat, sad. You can see the changing moods in the class. Mm. Right? And sometimes what happens? You find them very cheerful and excited. So you wonder what's happening. Someday they are upset. Someday, so what is the cycle that is happening? So as teachers... We need to understand that our children will have mood swings. How do I help them to sustain an excited or a happy mood swing? How do I help them to come out of the low or the sad swing? So the classroom will have to gear itself up to some strategies which will enable the class to slowly get into leaving behind negative emotions and entering a class of a lot of positivity. Otherwise, learning will not happen. So one important thing that was always pointed out, it was found that one of the first things that Teenagers seem to lack is sleep. Hmm. And they say, if you don't have a minimum of 8 to 10 hours of sleep, and our teens get much less. Yes, 60%, 70% in high schoolers. Which means inadequate sleep, there is a brain deficiency in oxygen. So they feel very sleepy and tired in school. It's almost like a mobile of ours, the charger, fully not charged. What happens to your phones? Hmm. They don't work after some time. Same thing happens to our bodies, to our brain. So sleep is very important. And parents have to ensure, schools have to create awareness. Good sleep, sound sleep is very, very important for children before they actually come to school. Next, please. Now, what are the needs that we can find in our adolescents? What do they actually need, our children? Do we know what they need? So if you look at this screen, it talks about children speaking about themselves. I'll start from the bottom where it says, I need to love and I to be loved just as I am. Or we'll take the first point. I need to understand myself and be myself. Point number one, that's the need. We need to allow children to breathe into their own spaces and not become somebody else. Children don't like to live in somebody's shoes. And the second voice of a child says, I need to have fun. I need to enjoy my life. I need to fill my mind my time with good things. So children are looking out for good things. Are we enabling that to happen in the school at home? A child says, I need to know I am important and I'm called a hero or a heroine. It's very important to acknowledge efforts of our children, to know that they are there. We may have 35 children, but all the 35 are looking at you. Are you in turn as a teacher looking at all the 35? Are there some children we don't see at all apparently? So they come in, they go out, have we handled their needs? Another voice says, I need to love people and I need to be loved. Two very important emotions. I need to have friends and I need to be a friend. So how does the school, how does the classroom bring in collaborative work, healthy relationships? I need to be a part of something with my friends. Everyone wants to do something with their friends. Yes, do a project, maybe do a dance, maybe do something else, go out together but they want to be part of a team. I need to have positive role models. You know, this point is very important. Seventh one, children are looking all around them. Who are those adults 
whom I can emulate. And sometimes, sadly, they find very few because what they seek, we do not seem to be giving them. So this is one thing we have to watch out for. Mm. And I need to understand the meaning of my sexuality. Children suddenly grow up after they are 11 or 12. And they wonder what's happening to them. What are these emotions that are suddenly coming into them? They are first alarmed, maybe shocked. And then they try to find out and they don't. They explore on their own. And if you do not tell children how to cope with their physical growth, which is now going to lead to an emotional growth and also to a social growth, then children are struggling to find meaning in their new lives. I need to understand the world around me. Suddenly the world looks very complex for adolescents. All these days it seemed to be fine. I was in grade five. Things were nice, hunky-dory. Suddenly I'm in six. Suddenly I'm in seven. I hear new words like be responsible, do this, do that. What's this? How is the world changing so fast? And finally, I need to have new relationships with God. They don't even know who God is. Is there someone up there? Is somebody listening to me? Do my prayers have some meaning? These are some very important questions that children ask. As educators, can we all look into how we can strategize some things in our classroom so that many of these feelings are actually allowed to be nurtured beautifully in our children? Next slide, please. So when we talk about the SEL core competencies, in this, you can see in the center that one, as students, they need to have self-management. Mm. What does self-management mean? Children should know how to regulate their emotions. As I already pointed out, there are so many emotions that come into us, into children. We need to tell them how to manage them. Yes, they are very upset at a score. The previous class ended, they got a test paper, or they felt very bad. Do they know how to handle it at that point of time and get ready for the next class? How do they manage self-control? Somebody has teased them. So they're longing to bash out. Is that the only solution? This is one self-management skill. Self-motivation. There cannot be a better motivation than motivating yourself. How do we enable our children to develop the skill that they are the best motivators of themselves? Stress management. Out of nowhere pops up stress. And not necessarily academically too. Could come from parental stress at home. There could be issues at home with parents, separated homes. You can name it. There are hundreds of areas where children would be facing stress. On the way to school, there is some bully outside. How do they manage it? How do they seek help? Do they know how to express it? And setting and achieving their goals. And that's why self-awareness is very, very important. Do they know what their feelings are? Are they able to set aside challenges and look at it with optimism. How about self-efficacy? How do I manage myself? And then we go to responsible decision-making. Look at the way it's titled. It's not called decision-making. It's called responsible decision-making, which is making informed choices. Mm. So we are the children are exposed to a variety of things, substances, maybe uh, alcohol, maybe. So do they make a responsible decision? Do they know that this decision has an implication? Do they know that this is an informed choice? And if they know that, they know it has a consequence. Do we enable our children to go through that cycle of responsible decision-making, safe choices for the self, for relationships with others, and in the school, of course. And we're looking at building relationships, the next aspect. How do they communicate with others about themselves? Being quiet all the time, I tell children, just being yourself, being quiet, that's not going to, we cannot, we are not mind readers. Your friends are not mind readers. So can you express yourself to others? So you just lock up and there's no expression on your face. People can't read it. So it's very important to find someone you can talk with. Look at how you resolve your conflicts. You don't get along with somebody. What do you do? How do you seek help? Half the time, children don't even know how to seek help. Whom to ask for? How do they go? What will people think if I go and ask for help? No, I'll try and cope on my own. And this is where there is a snowball effect happening. That their anxiety leads to stress and stress leads to more anxiety and you know, so on and so forth. We never know where it would end up. And now we talk about the final one called the social awareness. Because that's where I'm going to look at my family, my school, my community, my classmates. Can I recognize that there is diversity everywhere? Nobody's like me. I'm not like them. They're not like me. How do we all get along? How do I respect this? Do I have empathy for people? Do I have a child in the class who's autistic because we have inclusive classrooms? Can I empathize? 
Can I take care of someone who needs help? Can I understand ethical norms of my behavior? So these are many questions that children need to ask. And teachers have to enable answers to these questions in the class through open discussions. Next slide, please. Now, when we talk about building positive mental health in our students when we are teaching, let's look at some ways we can go about that. Can I have a shift in the slide now? Next slide. First thing I would say, as teachers, we need to create a very healthy, friendly environment in the class. So once you do that, children are not any longer afraid to open up and talk about their feelings. So this is one strategy that teachers have to take up. And students need to recognize what kind of environment do I have? Is it okay now that I open up and I share my feelings? Do I feel safe when I talk in my class? If I don't, I can tell my teacher, no, I'm not able to speak. I find I'm not comfortable with some people in my class. We can always do that. Next slide, please. We also have to teach our children why hard work is important. There is no substitute for that. And failure is not final. And success is not the end of everything in life. So when there is this process of not doing our best, is it okay to ask children to do a self-reflection? And can the teacher support them through? So children who are watching this, all that I can tell you is, one, there is actually no perfect definition of a mistake or a failure. In fact, they say failure gives more opportunity for improvement than success. So whenever we face something that we didn't anticipate or expect, look at it, reflect, find out how do I get through with this and seek support from your teachers. Next slide, please. Next slide, yeah. So as teachers, I would say, have mindfulness sessions or breathing. It's very simple to do that because I take classes on life skills for adolescents in my school. I do that for them. When I talk about mental health sessions, it's not simply about lecturing how to be and what to do. It's more important that there's an experiential learning happening with it. So writing a reflection and sharing it is one part of an experiential learning and where the skill of coping with myself is happening. Another important thing is mindfulness or mindful breathing, mindful meditation. It hardly takes 30 seconds to one minute when we ask children to sit up and be aware of their breath. Take a deep breath in and don't hold your breath. Slowly release it. You just do it about for 30 seconds and you find children look much better on the face. And I think it's very important that children do this at home also so that there is a mindfulness happening all the time. One class after the other, when a teacher begins, it's always good to start with 30 seconds to one minute of mindful breathing. Next slide, please. Uh, this is one thing, I, uh, by a coincidence, this morning, I was talking to my students of class 12 who are getting ready for their board exams. And I told them I want us to work on areas which could be very anxious for us. And I asked them to also write it down so that I could read and help them. And I have that whole bunch right here on my table, which I got this morning. And I found this to be true. Children are loaded with a lot of negative thoughts more than positive thoughts. The moment they drop in a test, the moment they're not feeling well, the moment they're not comfortable with something, immediately there is a negative thought. They procrastinate and then later on regret. That's a negative thought. So I've been talking to my children and I think as teachers, we need to talk. Students need to understand that if you're aware of your thoughts, what's happening to me, how do I use my time, that's where the self-awareness begins, then realistically, we can then challenge them to manage these negative thoughts. We cannot say we'll rub it out of your minds. No, these thoughts will come in. How do I harness them? How do I manage them? How do I then move on? I think these are some things that teachers will have to do, sometimes on a one-to-one -one basis, depending on a student need, and sometimes it could be a whole class where children have common issues in them. Next slide, please. As teachers, it is not necessary that we need to be full-time psychologists or highly qualified uh, mental health educators. No. I strongly believe today when we talk about holistic education, as teachers, we all need to learn about our children and what are some health mental health disorders that can be visible, sometimes not visible. And unless we know about that, it would be very difficult to begin our journey with our children. 
The same with our children. If the teacher is able to see the symptoms, if the teacher is able to see signs of distress in the class, signs of lack of interest, child looking out of the window, biting on the nails, fidgeting, looking down all the time, looking blurry-eyed, teary-eyed. These are areas which teachers have to be very alert about. And is it okay that at the end of the class, we just gently tell the child, can you stay back for a minute? I'd like to talk to you. This doesn't need any kind of degree or diploma. It is a question of a teacher getting sensitive about a child's needs. It is also the question of children now feeling there is a teacher all the time who's asking me how I feel. And there are so many teachers in my school who ask me that I could choose a teacher whom I'm comfortable with. So this is very important to take time. What are the symptoms that we can see in our children? What are some signs of mental health disorder? Do we just go face the board, teach the class and walk out? Right. And is that the sole end of education? True. Right? Next slide. So we have to tell them about their sleep habits, as already mentioned, a well-balanced diet, importance of exercise, all the three. Schools must give importance to games. There must be a break for other things like arts. Let children come out of the classroom, right out of the scholastic areas. Give them as many opportunities. And students, you must use as many opportunities as offered by the school. There's some chance to speak in the assembly, volunteer and take it up. Take up volunteerism, go around and look at smaller children, help them out, stand around in corridors, support people. You will forget your own challenges and look at other people. Absolutely. That's one way of feeling good. So try that out. Teachers try out this. Students should start initiating and using opportunities. School has plenty of opportunities thrown about everywhere. Are you picking them up? Are you using them well? Feel good after you start serving the school, after you start serving your classmates. Next slide, please. Uh, as teachers, I think it's very important when I enter my classroom that I seem to look calm. I look happy about coming into the class. I don't look stressed out. I don't look angry. I don't look upset. That's why it's called a mental health role model. I can't be coming in and telling my children, oh, I'm feeling terrible today. No, that's enough to put off your class. And lots of people tell us the first 20 seconds of entry of a teacher into the class decides the fate of that class. Children look up to you. They look at you and they decide this is how the class is going to be. You enter with a smile, look very enthusiastic. Even if you're carrying a burden of the previous class, the smile will wipe it out. Children feel good. Now begin to deal. They know that this teacher has undergone stress, pressure. Look at the way the teacher is managing it. How much of correction to do, but she's still smiling. They learn because children imitate. They are very good at copying. Yes, and if we demonstrate that, Children learn from us. Absolutely. Parents need to do that all the time. Yes? True. And the next slide, please. If I'm running short of time, please let me know. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we have other experts also waiting. Uh, so mm. I request you to kindly wrap it up very quickly. Sure. I just have two more points to go and I'll wind up. Sure. And uh, when we talk about interpersonal relationship, the role of teachers would be helping children connect and build. So the 21st century life skill talk a lot about the four C's, the communication, effective communication, collaboration, creative thinking, critical thinking, initiatives, resilience. So if, uh, schools can develop these skills and build relationship and educate children on the importance of caring. I think that is another step towards the social emotional build up in a school. Next slide, please. Next slide. Yes, coping skills are already pointed out. Talk about the autonomy finally. Always praise, teach your children to solve problems of their own life problems. Empower them. Let them feel I'm taking a decision. Let me manage it. And the last slide will wrap up actually when we support, we praise, we encourage, listen. Four things we need to do. Can we support children all the time? Can we praise when they need to be praised? Can we encourage our children? Can we listen to our children? Are we just seeing them or are we looking at them carefully? Are we listening to them or we just can hear some kind of babbling? Right. Take time to get to know our children. If we manage all this, school is going to be a beautiful place to live in. And uh, next slide, I just have a poem which I want to just show and share. Uh, next slide, please. We'll just skip that. Next slide. Next one, please. Yes, this is a the previous one, please. This is a lovely poem I thought I'll share and close. If children live with criticism all the time, they always learn to condemn others. If children are looking at hostility with which they learn, they learn to fight. If they learn to ridicule, then they learn to be shy. If children live with shame, 
they feel guilty all the time. If children live with tolerance, then they learn to be patient. Right. If children live with encouragement, they learn confidence. If they live with praise all the time, then they begin to appreciate others. If they live with fairness from all, then they learn justice. If they live with security, they have faith in people. If they live with approval of what they do, they learn to like themselves very much. Then if they live with acceptance and friendship, finally they begin to find true love in the world. And children have to learn to live with what life offers them. Absolutely. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Thank you so, so much. much. What a beautiful way to sum up the answer and to make us understand the importance of socio-emotional learning skills. Now, uh, I will move on to Kripa ma'am. Kripa ma'am, we have understood uh, how important these skills are, especially for our mental well-being when it comes to becoming a good human being, a good person. What do you think are the methods and strategies that can be used in the classroom and, you know, uh, that we can integrate with SEL with the existing curriculum, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, students who have been listening to the presentation. This is a very important topic. So I would, I would like to thank Pasanti, ma'am and Anil, sir, for beautifully explaining what SEL is so I can just focus on the activities right now. Yes. Uh, so I'm a psychologist. I've been practicing for the past four years and I have various clients, you know, from the ages of 8 to 88. And, you know, they come up with lots and lots of issues. But sometimes I see myself addressing to the kid, sort of thing. The, the student in them, the student that didn't learn how to manage their emotions very well. And that's why we need this SEL. You know, during uh, one of my sessions, one client told me, ma'am, I, I thought I was angry. Yes. Yes, I was actually sad. Mm -hmm. right? So the social conditioning happened. Just yesterday, I was talking to my students about social conditioning, where, you know, boy, boys, kids, you know, we are telling them when they start crying, we tell them, you know, don't cry like girls. Or why are you so weak and vulnerable? Why are you crying? These words get internalized and they start believing that anger is a bad, that crying is a bad emotion and only anger can be shown. Right? So even when they are very sad or extremely sad for genuine reasons, they get more angry and never be able to express their sadness. So these are the things that we need to teach our kids, you know, grow up to a very well-functioning adult. Anil Kumar sir pointed out about men mental health concerns and mental health issues. Uh, the uh, probability of them developing any serious condition is really less than them facing adverse situations, stress, grief, and everything. So we are helping students to build resilience and coping mechanism when they face with these inevitable conditions. So uh, let me not go much into theory as it was already explained. Let's focus on the activities. If I can have my PPT, please. Yes. Uh, the next slide, I know that it was it is relevant to say that Kripa Prakriti is my school's counselor too. Yes. Uh, not mentioned so far. She says. Arista Counseling, she's an <laughs> integral part of Sishya School. Yes, yes, ma'am. I was about to say that. So when I mention students and everything, I'm talking exclusively about Sishya students. And, you know, working with students have given me varied experience. This is something very useful and new for me. And Shishya is my, my school also. I studied in Shishya and I'm working here and it is really, really nice. That's so lovely. we'll start with the SEL activities and strategies. So students, if you are watching this, Please, let's start doing these activities in the coming year, maybe 2024, the beginning of the year. You can start with all these small, small activities. And activities here is not just a temporary activity, right? These activities are designed in a way it will help you lifelong, right? So next slide, please. Okay. Okay. Can we all start the session by this simple mindful breathing activity? Right. So this is nothing else. You have to just inhale for four seconds, hold your breath for four seconds and exhale for four seconds. Students, if you're watching this, please try it with me. So I'll just tell you inhale. So you can start. Inhale. Hold. Exhale. Can we try it again? You just count four counts in your mind when you're inhaling, right? Inhale. Hold. Exhale. 
So this is a mindful breathing activity in itself. This is what we call the box breathing technique. And this is something that helps you when you're overwhelmed, stressed, or even, you know, you had a heavy class, right? You learned a lot and you're unable to process everything. You just need a break. Right? And you have, you have only 10 seconds or like 15 seconds in between. This breathing activity would actually re relax you so much that, you know, it clears your mind and with whatever overwhelming anxiety, any kind of negative thoughts will actually put you into ease. So this is some breathing technique that I do multiple times a day when I feel overwhelmed or overworked. It really relaxes you. This is one of the breathing techniques. So we will be seeing a lot of other activities as well. Can we move on to the next slide? Okay. So before we start the session, so the activity that I'm going to be mentioning can be done by anyone, anywhere, and anytime. But there are certain things that we need to remember as we are talking about SEL. SEL, social emotional learning, is a very continuous process. Right? As in, it is not a one-day thing or a one-time thing. So we, we need to have an exclusive curriculum, dedicated and trained teachers, and maybe the uh, uh, amount of time that is just set for SEL practices in learning SEL with it being integrated into the regular curriculum. And it is also vital that we have trained professionals, that is school counselors, for student mental health well-being. And training for teachers to be first level counselors, as what Vasindi Ma'am rightly pointed out, and teachers, teachers as Shishya are trained as first level counselors, where they are able to give mental health aid for students in need, the first level intervention. So this will enhance our SEL program. Next slide, please. So extensive curriculum, when I mean, we need to have, I think this is, this all was told by Ma'am, so let's move on. Next slide, please. So this self-care, mindfulness activities, and you know, the ability to ask for help. So sometimes we don't know if it is okay for us to ask for help. So these are the things that are taught during these SEL activities. Next slide, please. Okay. So the first thing that, first activity that we are going to focus is called mood tracker. So students, please start, you know, having a mood tracker at least from you know 2024 so you can see how how many different emotions and feelings that you have felt throughout this year right so mood tracker is a tool that we use to record our personal mood and you know see the pattern of it so first part of this activity is you know you can do it as a group or individually also list down all the emotions that you might feel every day so these emotions could be different from person to person just list down whatever emotions that you might have, you might feel on a day-to-day -day basis, right? And think about these emotions for a second. Associate one color with each emotions, right? So it can, it need not be the same. So your friend might say, happy means red, right? But for you, happiness is yellow. It's okay. These colors are very subjective. Then this will help you look into the emotion that we are talking about. And now I will show you how to do this mood tracker. Next slide, please. So these are some mood trackers done by our students. So as you can see, they have listed out the emotions that they might feel on a day-to-day -day, day -day basis, associated a color with it, and drawn these beautiful images, right? So even if you don't know drawing, it's completely fine. Just having some circles, squares, or leaf, or flowers, whatever it is. So have 31 boxes, 31 images, and color each images respective to the day with the emotion that you might feel that day. So as you can see, we'll move on. Next slide, please. So as you can see, one of the students has colored many colors in the same box, right? So all this will help you understand that it is okay to feel multiple emotions a day. And all the emotions that you feel are temporary, right? Let it be sadness, let it be happiness. So sometimes we feel very happy, right? And we feel like suddenly something happens and we feel sad. We, we might feel, oh, why is happiness not lasting for us, right? But the thing we have to understand is happiness is also emotion. It is temporary and it can change. And sadness is also the same. So sometimes when we are sad, we might feel like this is the end of the world, right? I will never be happy again. So all these things, it will help you understand that it is not 
one emotions you feel that it is many emotion and you can also see the colors right contradictory emotions are there so you can feel happy angry at the same time you can feel sad and like excited at the same time so the, these uh, existence of multiple different emotion is also very natural so one of my student had colored you know so lots in lots of places it was happy plus angry so this this was a different combination the student came to me and asked like mam see i am happy but i am immediately angry i don't know and sometimes sad also so something is happening why i am not able to feel happy you know just happy so that then we talked and we understood that the kid somewhere feels like they don't don't deserve to be happy right and when happiness come there is a self sabotaging behavior of anger or sadness where the student immediately feels sad or angry so these kind of patterns when you are doing this mood tracker you might understand the patterns in your emotions and feelings and it is really useful and teachers also can look at these uh, mood trackers to understand in what state the student is in next slide please okay so we also mood tracker mood tracker is a very easy fun activity i hope you all start doing it the second activity is little difficult but it is very rewarding this is what we call letter to self right letter to self is a letter you write to yourself and as the, it, it is easy right so you can write to your past self you can imagine a situation maybe a time where you got very less marks in your exam and you were very sad you thought all your friends would leave you or your parents would scold you you were very extremely stressed and overwhelmed right you can imagine that person and write a letter to that self of yours telling see i am okay right now you know things worked out fine you don't have to be sad i am here for you so this will help you increase that self compassion self love and you know it it also gives a evidence to your mind that okay even when things are worse it will get better so there is another way you can write this letter where letter to your future self you can imagine that okay you have achieved whatever you wanted in your life you know whatever your goal is and you are living the best version of your life imagine that person and write a letter to that person this will also help you in times where you feel clueless right you feel like oh i have no purpose in life what am i doing in life you know during those times writing this letter will really help you and really see what you actually want yeah so can we move on to the next slide please okay so these are some letters i have just given example we can move on next slide please the next slide please okay so this is again a little bit harder activity again equally rewarding activity it is called self reflective journaling so i hope you have all heard of what journals are right so when new year new year comes we start writing our journals hopefully you people students start writing this journal it, it really will you know give a different perspective of your life it is like writing your own story right maybe no one is reading it but it is still very good so but this is something we call self reflective journal so as students we are living in a very busy world right now we don't have time so any time i suggest journaling to my students they tell ma'am we don't have time ma'am i just want to sleep we just want to complete homework and sleep right so this this is where, what is happening so you need not write the whole story so i have given certain prompts that you can use next slide please so you need not even write it every day right only when you are feeling something unpleasant or something that you are not able to handle so when thoughts are inside us right when you are thinking and you are re rethinking and overthinking what happens it it intensifies even if it is a very small thought it just intensifies and it makes us feel like okay this is something i can never come over or this is something that is going to destroy me but it might be very simple right sometimes it is hard to find trust someone to tell it out maybe once you tell it out you feel it is silly so if there is a situation where you are not immediately able to tell it out you can use these journaling prompts the first thing is which emotion am i trying to avoid right now am i avoiding to avoiding to be angry sad guilty whatever it might be and why am i trying to avoid this emotion why am i uncomfortable feeling this emotion so as i always tell to my students any emotion that you get naturally is fine right you cannot stop any emotions you should not tell i should never feel angry or i should never feel sad the way you express it 
or the way you understand this is the only thing that you have control over. So anger is also a healthy emotion. But maybe if you are expressing it in a bad way, you have to manage it. Right? But no one can not have any emotions at all. So you can understand why am, why am I trying to hide it? And what does this emotion need from me? So sometimes anger is not anger. It is sadness or feeling helplessness, powerlessness. It can be anything. Right? What it is needing from me? And what is preventing me from addressing this feeling? It could be, you know, my friends will laugh at me if I cry. Or if I cry, I will never succeed. Whatever the negative thoughts you're having around these emotions, you can write it down. And once you write it down, just sit and read and reflect on what you have written. So once you start writing it down, you know, thinking, while well, you're putting it into words only, you will understand certain things are not true. Right? The next slide, please. Okay. So sometimes when things are going bad, this you can use. Why am I being hard on myself right now? What it is serving, right? What is the purpose of me, myself being hard on myself? Right? Would it be different if I was kinder to myself at this moment? If I was a five-year-old child, would I be talking the same thing I'm talking to myself right now? Right? So even if it is some small things, we might tell, oh, you maybe this presentation, if I am here and I'm nervous, like, oh, you can never do any presentation, you cannot talk to people at all. Something like this. This negative self-talks keep going on inside us. Right? So you have to ask yourself if I was a small child or you can imagine yourself as a little kid if to a five-year-old myself would I be talking this way would she be happy right now right these are the things that will help you and writing it down will really help you I hope you start using these prompts you know maybe from 2024 start of the year and have the self-reflective journaling habit so next slide please okay so ma'am also mentioned a lot of mindful activities. So mindfulness activities is something that you can practice anywhere right? at any time. And it is you intentionally focusing on the present situation. So we understand when we are sad, we are thinking, we are focusing about something in the past, something that has happened. We don't have control over it. It has happened. We don't have a time machine to go back. But still those things hurt us. Right? And sometimes when we are anxious or scared we are focusing on something in the future again a thing that we don't have any control over but when you come to the present when you are mindful and when you start focusing on the present these emotions the intensity of these emotions will reduce that is what mindfulness activities are so we'll move on next slide so i think we we use these mindfulness activities in our school so one is called mandela art another is mindful doodling so this is what we teach our kids you can try it on your own right so mindful doodling is nothing you know just start take a piece of paper and start doodling small small objects it need not be anything big you don't have to do no drawing to do all this just sit there and think maybe you know things that i like in my school or it can be your favorite cars or it can be just flowers whatever it is so doodling, sometimes we do while we are studying, while we are listening to the teacher, right? We get somewhere distracted and we start drawing in the end of the notebooks. So all this is sometimes good also, right? If you're intentionally doing, it is good. It, it will help you focus on the present. The next slide, please. So grounding exercise. So as I already told you, grounding exercise is similar to mindfulness, right? Where you are grounding your mind to the present. So as I told you, when you are anxious, nervous or scared about something, our mind is totally focused on the future. Right? And what ifs, lots of this negative what ifs come to us. right? So what if, if I fail this board exam? What if I don't get into this college? What if I never you know, get any job? All this negative what ifs, you know, things that makes us anxious and scared. So grounding exercise, doing those grounding exercise at that point of time, will help, help you come back to the present again, ground yourself and make you understand that, okay, this is not really happening to me. This is way into the future and I have no control over it. Right? So this is something students should learn. A lot of grounding exercises are there, whatever works for you. So when things get hard in the future, you don't, maybe, maybe for an example, right, I, I'm trying to join this meeting and my internet is not at all working, right? If I am not grounding myself thinking, okay, you know, somehow I can resolve this. Instead, I get too much panic and like I start crying or I start shouting. What would happen? 
the functionality of my life reduces the quality of my life reduces right so those are the time that you start using grounding exercises so i'll teach you three easy grounding exercises these are not just these three there are a lot more if you're willing to learn there is always resources for you to learn but we will focus on three grounding exercises that will really help you in these negative situations next slide please so this is one one of the easiest technique this is not just for student i have, i give this activity to all my ad adult clients as well right it really helps them to ground themselves so there are five things when you are anxious when you feel agitated overwhelmed look around yourself see five things that you can see notice five things that you can see it can be away from you it can be near you but try to see something little far away and it can be your window it can be your board it can be look at its texture uh, see okay this object is near to me uh, can i can i wait for a minute the prayer is going on uh well ma'am uh, actually we are running short of time and the next expert is uh, yes, also yes, there so if you allow can i uh, you know uh, ask the question to the next expert i think you have beautifully explained about these uh, exercises this mindful activities that uh, we are supposed to do and now uh, nandana ma'am i have a question for you like uh, you know we have learned about all mm -hmm. these strategies that can be integrated uh, with the existing curriculum we all know that you know generation of today gen z as we call them they're quite tech savvy and uh, yeah you know they cannot uh, stay away from the internet or the online stuff for a really long time do you think that online gaming is beneficial for them do you think in a way it uh, benefits them when it comes to uh, social emotional learning thank you so much for the question ma'am yeah uh, so i think uh, all my fellow panelists would agree with me that as educators we keep getting a lot of concerns from parents about the time that children are spending on online games yes. so today like i tried to come up with a counteractive solution where uh, not only the children will be able to tackle the challenges like uh, addiction screen time cyberbullying violent behavior due to games etc mm. but at the same time they can also utilize these online games to build their social emotional competencies right so before we dive in uh, to the topic today let's all take a moment a pause and i want my audience the students who are watching here to check into your emotions like kripa ma'am has already mentioned it's very important uh, how do you feel right now i'll make it easy for you which zone do you think you belong right now do you have low energy and motivation to participate or uh, uh, you know, uh, you feel very attentive and positive or you're a little uncomfortable and can't focus right now mm -hmm. or you have some negative emotions you had a fight with your parents or your classmate and you, know, you want to react right now so whatever it is just you can share with us in the comment box or you can write it down in your journal or just keep it to yourself whatever suits better to you so coming to what is sel this has already been uh, beautifully elaborated by all the panelists here so i won't go into the theory i would just like to share my take on sel so see suppose you want to go to learn driving okay driving a car the trainer doesn't right away send you to a car and ask you to drive the car right he'll first teach you small small skills like what are each parts or what are the functions of each parts Uh, how to balance your steering what are the different traffic rules how to have hand eye coordination etc etc and finally you put together all these skills and drive the car successfully similarly to have healthy positive social interactions and to build positive relationships with others as well as yourselves it is very very important to have a set of skills or competencies that we call as socio emotional learning competencies or sel competencies the different competencies uh, vasanthi ma'am has already explained which belongs to the kesel framework it was developed by the collaborative for academic and social emotional learning uh, let me introduce you to another uh, well famous framework which is developed by unesco mgiep mahatma gandhi institute for education for peace 
So this framework, unlike the Kaysil framework Ma'am was talking about, has four competencies, uh, which is empathy, mindfulness, compassion, critical inquiry, and it is in short called EMC square. Okay, so it's called as a EMC square framework. So I'll elaborate on each of them as we go. So when the Kaysil came up with the framework that Vasanthi Ma'am was talking about, before that, they did a research, a survey with high school students. And this was one of the findings where the high school students mentioned that they feel SEL is more relevant when it is embedded in the context of what they're learning. They want it to be a part of their curriculum or their daily life rather than a separate chunk of, uh, you know, uh, skills or a separate chunk of curriculum. That's when researchers thought about games because you all love to play games, whatever age you are of it helps you to make friends, forget your worries, forget your hatred for each other. And at the same time, as Peter Gray uh, listed out the four evolutionary functions of play, it helps you to practice certain physical as well as mental skills that are required for life. Maybe running, jumping or uh, competitive spirit, sportsmanship, etc. Learn, you can learn to cope physically and emotionally with unexpected uh, harmful events. Maybe it could be a failure or it could be bullying. If you face it somewhere else, how do you want to cope up with it? It also helps you generate new ideas. For example, when you play Lego blocks or when you play puzzles, you come up with creative ideas and it reduces hostility towards your friends and enhances the cooperation. The same idea uh, can be taken forward to digital games because as we have already mentioned, you all are glued digitally right now, especially after COVID. So digital games have an extra advantage that they create an uh, artificially simulated environment and your avatar. Avatar is something all my students would know that any game you have to first create your avatar. So your avatar performs certain actions uh, and Sometimes they don't perform certain actions based on the rewards and feedbacks that they get. So why digital games? Why online games? First of all, they're highly engaging and that is the reason that they could be addictive. Uh, we'll come to that later. They give immediate feedback and rewards in the form of power-ups or coins or an extra life, etc. And negative feedbacks also when you lose your life or when you lose some points. They are active learning skills. You are not just sitting in a class, listening to somebody lecturing to you. You are an active participant there. It promotes cooperation, especially in games like Minecraft, where uh, multiplayer games, where you're collaborating with your friends to complete the challenges and they're self-paced. You are working at your own pace. Now, when you're choosing the game that you want to study or you want to play to build your SEL, I would recommend to take the help from a teacher or a parent who uh, knows about this. So there are certain criteria you need to keep in your mind. First thing, the goal of the game must align with your SEL goal. If I want to build empathy, I would select a game which is specially designed based on research to develop empathy. Second is age appropriateness and developmental stage. Not all games are right for all the age groups. So again, take the help of an adult while selecting the game. Third is content and safety. Does it have too violent content or mature themes? Or does it require you compromising certain personal data? All these things you have to keep in mind. Engaging gameplay and mechanics means the game should not be too easy that you easily get bored. It shouldn't be too difficult that you finally give up and stop playing the game. Okay. Then platform accessibility. Some of these games require an iPad or an iPhone. So based on your hardware availability, you must select the game. Reviews and recommendations by experts as well as other users are very important. I'll be showing you uh, certain resources where you can find them later as we uh, conclude our presentation. So the first competency in the EMC Square Framework is empathy. In short, empathy is nothing but walking in somebody else's shoes. Okay, uh, Like in-game, your avatar lives as somebody else and faces challenges and looks at things from a different perspective and understands what that character is going through. And most of these situations you might never come across in your real life, but you get to experience that in your game. 
So that's how uh, video games help developing empathy. I'll give you certain examples. Minecraft is a very, very popular game. I, I think most of the students play Minecraft. So uh, Minecraft as such has a lot of impact on SEL skills, but seeing its popularity in 2020, they came up with the education ed edition, which is nothing but a set of lesson plans oriented towards a particular goal. Okay. So here there are many uh, content packs or lesson plan packs that are available, which are oriented to building empathy or mindfulness or any of the SEL skills. So there the teacher assigns certain tasks and the students collaborate with each other. For example, the teacher says, build a fort. Okay. The students, whatever resources they, uh, their avatar can get, they will collect it all. They will collaborate with each other, listen to each other, listen to their perspectives and come up and build a fort or uh, such kind of quests. Zodi's World is a beautiful game and it is based on solid research work. Uh, so this involves four mini games that you have to solve and you will get small, small chunks of a puzzle. And one player can see only one small part of the puzzle and other player whom you're collaborating with will have the other part of the puzzle. So you need to play small mini games to get these puzzles, come back to the home screen and assemble them all together to form a stolen clock. So uh, the beauty of this game is the researchers, they conducted a research where uh, they made eight students to play this game for a week and to play the traditional Lego blocks. I hope everybody would have seen Lego, uh, Lego blocks uh, for a week. And they found that this game helped better to uh, build membership, partnership, and friendship among the students and that too without any human mediator. Bury Me My Love, this is a game which is designed to build empathy towards war refugees. So it tells you the story of Noor and Majid. They are a couple and uh, Noor is migrating from Syria to Europe to escape out of the war zone. And her husband Majid stays back in Syria and guides her through text messages so that she reaches her destination safely. So you as Majid are supposed to uh, choose the correct decisions for her and make her escape out. This game is very, very effective in understanding and developing a take on the wars. Are wars really necessary in our world? Thus creating empathy. So you might not come across such a situation ever in your life, but still you're able to get the mindset of the people who are going through it. Next, very important uh, uh, concept or the competency. We've already spoken a lot about mindfulness, being in the present, relaxing. I would directly jump on to the example of games for mindfulness. Mindful Powers is a game which is designed for small kids, the pre-K to five kids. So if the teachers and parents are watching, uh, in situations where your child is acting out or they are throwing a tantrum or you want them to uh, you know, stop getting distracted and come back to the present, this is a very nice game. So here the main character is a cute little sea creature called Fliberty Gibbet. You can see it on the screen. So what the child is supposed to do is, uh, initially it would have a lot of spikes. The child is supposed to stroke, pet the creature till all the spikes loses and the creature starts looking happy. So this calms down the child and brings back its focus. Along with that, there are certain uh, mindful breathing exercises, as you can see on the top right corner, which are in between the activities and help them to meditate and breathe. yu is uh, actually an online mood journal. Kripa Ma'am has spoken about mood tracking. You can do it online using the app. Uh, it provides you nine emojis, nine options of emotions. You have to select what do you feel today and why do you feel so? Describe how you're feeling. Like if I feel angry today, what are what am I experiencing? Maybe I'm sweating or maybe I'm feeling restless or maybe I'm getting heartburn. What do you feel? And what, why you're feeling? What could be the possible reason you're feeling like that? And a special feature of this app is you can share your mood journal with your teacher or counselor or maybe with your friends only if you choose to do so. Or you can just... Keep it to yourself and track your mood. Wisdom, the world of emotions, another game which is designed for ages four to eight, that is primary school children. So your character in this game is 
walked to a new virtual world. It uses augmented reality, by the way. So this world is called as Kingdom of Anger. And the citizens in the kingdom are all suffering because of different, different emotions. So your character walks through and uh, has to uh, complete certain quests. Like um, you have to identify what is this, uh, which emotion is this, what uh, based on the person's uh, vocal tone, body language, etc. You have to identify and label the emotion they're going through. And this will help you get some superpowers. And these superpowers will help you to rescue the people out of the kingdom so that is the game and if you go wrong don't worry they give you the corrective feedbacks as well self-talk with superhero zip it is again another very very important app this is basically like your amazon uh, alexa or siri where you can have a conversation it's, a, it's called a conversational agent which encourages positive self-talk so uh, zip the name of the superhero he will tell you a story for example he tells you about a boy who is very, very angry on his best friend. And Zip will ask you, what would you have done if you were at his place? So initially, if you start with a negative self-talk, like I am very angry on my best friend and I want to hit him or I want to use abusive language against him or I might never ever talk to him in my entire life, then Zip will walk you through or Zip will guide you to a positive self-talk. And by the end of it, you would be saying, that, yeah, I am very angry at my best friend, but I might calm down, I'll take some time, and I'll talk to him to resolve the issues that I didn't like what you did, and I don't want it to happen later. So this is the way how Zip will uh, encourage positive self-talk. Similarly, there's a super villain character who will be demonstrating what do you mean by negative self-talk. So very, very helpful there. So our next competency that we're targeting is compassion. See, there is a difference between empathy and compassion. Empathy is where you understand what the other person is suffering. And compassion is a step ahead where you understand and you want to relieve the other person from the suffering. You have an urge to do something about it. That is compassion. It could be your fellow mates. It could be, your, uh, it could be animals around you or anybody. Yeah. So there are some video games that I would like to introduce which are very good at building compassion. This is called a Zoo Academy. Again, it is uh, made for ages five to six years. And here you join an academy called a Zoo Academy. Mrs. Howard is a principal of the academy. She will be introducing to different, different characters or your classmates in the class, and they will be having certain problems. So for example, on the screen, you can see uh, that Tango is a character who is slightly shy and nervous. And it helps him a lot if there is a friend along with him during recess. And then the game will ask you to choose what will be your step. Like, will you uh, go as a friend along with him? Will you ignore Tango? Or will you uh, join the bullies to trouble him more? And based on your choice, you move across the different, different levels in the games. And in between every step of the game, there are built-in mindfulness and breathing exercises as well. Zuyu is very similar to Zoo Academy. The game mechanism is similar, but it has one special feature that helps in SCL assessment. So there have been research papers about this game. So what this does is based on the choices you make, uh, it gives you a report, as you can see on the top left corner. It gives you a report on what skills you have already uh, you know, uh, gained mastery over how much percent, what skills you're weak in, et cetera, et cetera. And accordingly, you can uh, manipulate your training. So this is very helpful for teachers as well as counselors. War of Mine, uh, this specially focuses the adolescent, the nine to 12 group. So it gives you a real life experience about what the civilian survivors go through during a war. Like you uh, listen to stories in Israel, Palestine a lot. So here in this game, your and your friends' avatars, they will all be living in a camp, refugee camp. Right now. And during the day, yeah. Ma'am, uh, during the day. We are running yeah. short of time, so we have to no, wrap just, up uh, the session here. But yes, uh, just a few more slides, and can I just wrap uh, it up? Ma'am, just one or two slides, please. Uh, not okay, more than sure, that. Sure. Yeah. Sure, sure. So, uh, this is War of Mine, uh, which helps you to understand the war situation. Then critical inquiry, 
is uh, where you have to use your logic, available resources, and think about your impact of your future decisions. For example, rigged. This is a game where, as an adolescent, you are presented with uh, topics. For example, uh, today uh, you missed your bus, or your bus is late. What would you do to reach the class? So, if you decide to take a cab instead, your finance meter goes down, but your responsibility and academic meter goes up, as right. you can see on the screen. And you lose the game if any one of them you run out. And it also helps you to get a report. Similarly, there is Florence, which helps you learn the nuances of romantic relationships. So, these are all meant for adolescent kids. Right, this was the resources. Uh, uh, Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt you in the middle, but we have to wrap up uh, the session yeah. here because we are running short of time. But I really thank you uh, for showing us, uh, you know, you know these different online games that are very beneficial for the students and for anybody who plays them. And of course, it can lead to the development of socio-emotional learning skills. So this was a very fruitful session, very beneficial one, where we understood quite a lot about the importance of, uh, you know, socio-emotional learning skills, how they can be developed, what is the importance of these skills in our life and what role do they play. So I would like to thank all our panelists today, uh, Professor Anil Kumar K, Dr. Vasanti Thyagarajan, Ms. Kripa Prakriti, and of course, Ms. Nandana Varma for their valuable contribution to this session. So viewers, this is me, Harpreet Kaur, taking leave of you from this session. But of course, uh, you can continue watching our programs, our educational programs, and you can gain a lot from them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Harpreetji, for taking us through. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you, Vasandri Madam. Thank you, Harpreetji. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, good coordination. And yes, uh, so we will see you next with another relevant topic. Or uh, uh, let's take leave of you. Namaskar. Namaskar. Thank you. Ab nahi hai hichke chana, man ke swasth par hai dhyan lagana. Ab nahi hai hichke chana. मन के स्वास्थ्य पर है ध्यान लगाना मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी मन की सेहत भी है जरूरी काउंसलर से फिर क्यों दूरी चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ चलो अब अपना फोन उठाओ मन उधर पड़ पर कॉल लगाओ मनोदर्पण के काउंसलर से परामर्श पाने के लिए डायल करें टोल फ्री नंबर आठ चार चार आठ चार चार शून्य छ तीन दो नंबर एक बार फिर सुने एट फोर फोर एट फोर फोर जीरो सिक्स थ्री टू